to do a presentation?
Uh, I'm excited for the next semester, next year, and uh, it's great to be back. Awesome. What's the Dolores update? Oh, Dolores is back in the Elon right now. Uh, she flew back from Rome last week, and she's hanging out with the family right now, and then she's going to fly right back to Rome probably in the next five days. What's she doing in Rome? She's working as the uh, she's working as a resident coordinator for our study abroad program at the University of Dallas. So she works with students over there, and I think there are about 120 students wow. flying to Rome over the next few weeks to start their study abroad semester. So she's going to be busy. I heard that this year's semester, this year's class was the largest at UD ever. The largest, yeah. 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 The yeah. largest ever. We had 500 incoming freshmen. I take some of the credit for that because I'm the <laughs> <laughs> that I toured well and then you have to give 500 excellent tours. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's exciting. But walking around campus, there were there were so many new faces there. 500 freshmen, really eager. Yeah. Very young. First generation. First yeah. generation. Nope, sure. Thanks, thanks to Charlie. Yeah, thanks to you and my course. Mm. Any other announcements? Brad, what's going on, Irving? All right. So we are extremely fortunate today. We, um, our, our group organization had a district roundtable, and we were able to go to it. There we go. We were able to go to it, had a lot of inf information that was great. And that is where I met, that is where I met our speaker today. Our speaker today is Holly Hollenbeck uh, from the Park Cities Club. She gave such a, an, an invigorating presentation to just a lot of knowledge wrapped up. So I want everyone uh, to join me and welcome Holly Hollenbeck from the Park Cities Club. Thank you. Thank you. I think so. You can just pull it up. Yeah, turn the other one off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hi. So, uh, welcome uh, and thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, it's always lovely to come out to the clubs in our district. I am your district membership chair for the next year. Um, I'm actually from the north. I just moved to Dallas right before COVID. So, uh, you Texans are all uh, a little bit of a strange beast to me, but I'm getting used to it. <laughs> um, in any case, I'm thrilled with the enthusiasm, and we have a wonderful opportunity here in, in this neck of the woods to really grow Rotary. And I want to talk for a few minutes about why um, that's so important, because some of us get set in ways and we think, you know, well, I've got my buddies here in Rotary. You know, we don't really need to grow. We're doing great. Well, the problem is, is that in 30 years, if we continue at the rate we are, if you can go to the next screen, just a couple of statistics. If we uh, continue shrinking by 3% in this district every year, we will not exist in 30 years. So uh, an important part of being a Rotarian is giving, right? And how can we give and make a difference to this community if we're shrinking? We're gonna have less of an opportunity to provide um, you know, community service, not just here, but around the world. So it's very vital that those of us in the US, especially in this district, look to the future and say, who is going to be my replacement and just think about it every single one of us just brought in one new rotarian a year you have 12 months to get it done right it's not going to be that hard so um this just tells you exactly what i'm talking about here we're sure you close to three percent um on, in the east the other side of the globe we're growing all right but in the u.s we're shrinking and, and it would just be a horrific thought to think that rotary didn't exist in 30 years so um i just want to start with that horrific thought and now let's talk about what we can do about it go on to the next screen so uh, obviously you've always heard it's not just important to attract and get guests in, but get members and engage them and find ways to retain them um next screen because obviously our reach is is to make a huge impact and i specifically love this quote because it um, delineates exactly what we're looking at here you know we have to look at new ways to do things um it's the only way we're going to advance so the electric light did not come from continuous improvement of the candle right so let's talk about what we can do differently so next screen so you've heard about these alternative club that uh, models all right and you have one of them you have a rotaract club which is brilliant um it's very easy to also start a satellite club um and if you go to the next screen satellite club 
um, is only requires eight members. So you have, um, you can actually recruit as a group. Just think about it if you could um, find a way, you know, people in your church. <clears throat> hey, I don't really have time to be a full Rotarian, but I'm interested in what, what you're telling me about Rotary. Um, and if you get a group of them together, they can be a satellite club attached to your club, which helps eventually bring in more new Rotarians, but it also helps expand our reach and our, and our pool of volunteers for our projects, and not to mention donations. So it's a wonderful way to grow. Cause-based, we just had a suicide prevention club start up in our district where everyone's, you know, they're, they're, they're all centered around the cause. And there's 49 new Rotarians, 49 new Rotarians. So my, my job looks really good so far. <laughs> but I, I, um, that, I inherited that. It was just starting up when I came on board. We're looking at starting a vet club. If there's people you know um, in the community that are vets, that you could start them up as a cause-based satellite group of vets. So there's a lot of ways to group recruit that helps to grow. And what I would task you all with is somebody in this club volunteer to look into starting up one of these alternative club models attached to your club, in addition to your road rack, maybe just an interact club, you know, and, and, and solicit your 25 road racks to help with the interact club at a high school nearby. That's also a wonderful funnel to get um, awareness and, um, you know, the <coughs> parents of those interactive road rack members are a wonderful low hanging fruit to consider. So I say, don't just think, oh, this sounds great. I'm glad people are doing this. Find someone in this club willing to be your point person to you know, look into what can we do in the way of one of these um, group recruits or just a side club, like a satellite club that helps to grow this club. All right, so, so I'm hoping we find a volunteer here that can help out with that because that's a wonderful way to, to, uh, to expand. Go to the next slide. So the other important thing is, and uh, Charlie probably has some good uh, suggestions for us all. It's Charlie, right? Yeah, has some good suggestions on how to um, bring in youth. But here's one that I task you with, is someone put together a list of all the great things that your club has in the way of um, uh, backgrounds, education, mentorship capabilities. So say you have somebody that used to be or still is an engineer, all right, and has won some sort of award in engineering. You know, just put together your brag sheet about all these, because you guys all are movers and shakers in the community, but put that down on a brag sheet to hand to a young person. They walk in here and they say, well, I don't fit in here, with the exception of Charlie, everyone's, you know, way older than me, I don't belong here. Well, this, you sell it by promoting what you can do to help them in the way of mentorship. All right, and, and help them understand that that's part of Rotary is as a new young member, you're getting to associate with movers and shakers in this community, people that have started businesses, people that have run businesses for years, people that have had great accomplishments. So write about those accomplishments in a brag sheet and hand it to prospective members. And when I say, well, prospective members, how do you even find those members, right? Well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, have that brag sheet so that you have that ready to hand to people, especially young people, that, under, that want to serve, you know, and that is a big selling point right there, our service, right? But they also would feel more, you know, like they're accepted here if they understand that, look, we're looking to mentor you and provide you with some understanding of how you can become more accomplished with your career as you're moving up the totem pole or the, the career ladder, whatever. The next screen. So the brag sheet um, obviously is to provide these prospects with information, but also put on your brag sheet not just who your fabulous, all your fabulous members and their careers, but uh, list um, your projects, um, important and great speakers you've had, um, and then of course provide mentor spotlights. So um, I think that's something that should come out weekly or monthly in your newsletter. Um, maybe at your podium once a week spotlight one of your members and you know kind of go through their bio because that helps engage all of your members and there, there's probably some of you who've been here for a long time that maybe don't know that much about someone else's background here in the same club so definitely mentor spotlighting is, is a wonderful tool to engage but it's also a wonderful tool to uh, 
you know, add to your brag sheet. Um, and uh, that, that's something that is a good selling tool PR piece for you. Next. So how do we become a more diverse club? I mean, I look around here and there's only one other woman in the room. Are you a Rotarian? Yeah, yes, yeah. okay. Um, and there's only one young person. Um, Thank you. There's, <laughs> oh, oh, um, oh, you're, oh, yeah, oh, so obviously Rotary has tasked us with, and I didn't put the paragraph about diversity up here that our Rotary International has put out, but I mean, many of you are probably very aware of what an important um, part of uh, Rotary is to make sure our community feels included and welcome at Rotary. And, you know, I, I understand there's an exclusivity to it, but that's not what we're trying to do anymore, okay? We're not trying to be the exclusive club that no one can get into. We're trying to include and reflect the community. Does this room reflect this community? I don't think so. Um, there's, there's an opportunity here to really bring in and do it with the mentorship type approach, right? Um, bringing young people, maybe give them a discount on the dues while they're under 30 years old or under 35, right? Find a way to engage those in the community. Invite local organization leaders that are of diverse backgrounds to come speak. Um, and invite them a panel of diverse people from this community to come speak at one of your Rotary gatherings and ask them questions about diversity and inclusiveness. All the large organizations across this country right now I do that sort of training regularly for all of their employees. I belong to a, a, a member of a, a, one of the world's largest construction companies, Turner, and I have 14 states, and we have, you know, we're all over the world though, but we, every one of our 10,000 employees in the U.S. has to go through diversity and inclusivity training now, and it's a matter of making sure that we allow ourselves, whether it's in our Rotary Club or in our life in general, to to include those around us and reflect the community that's around us so that we become more diverse. The next screen. So encourage and support unrepresented people to take on leadership positions in your club, all right? So I'm glad to hear you have a female president. That's awesome. Um, and uh, it's a wonderful way to help other females feel included in this club because they see themselves reflected in your leadership. So that's an important part of how we become more um, diverse and inclusive so that our community feels welcome here at Rotary. Um, another wonderful tool is Community Advisory Board. Um, community Advisory Board is something that Plano West utilized at their club and they um, added 65 new members last year. Wow. 65 new members. And how did Plano West do that? They reached out to the community they found some community people to be added volunteers to community service projects. They reached out and said, hey, would you like to volunteer at one of our community service projects? Just what we have coming up. And they got together a group that would be available to help. They wanted to serve the community and the needs of the community. And so they became this community advisory board that not only provided volunteers, but also advised the Rotary Club on what the community needs. Right. So they work together and many of those people in that community advisory board ended up joining Rotary. So that's how they did it. They grew by starting off with this community advisory board. So maybe that panel you have come speak about diversity. They uh, uh, become your community advisory board and then you invite them to come volunteer at future projects because the more you invite friends family you know people from other organizations you belong to the more you invite them to new service projects the more um, interested they may become with rotary they may not do it just to bring them as a guest to a breakfast but if you invite them to a community service project they can see rotarians at work and they can see what we're all about and that makes a huge difference so that is another way um, to help build a diverse club. And there's more information and a training at the Learning Center about becoming a diverse club. And I, I encourage you, if you are a speaker canceled at the last minute, play that training on diversity on, on from Rotary International. It will really help engage you in, in the motivation to help this club become more reflective of the community in which we sit. Next one. 
So we're going to talk about low hanging fruit, but first we're going to start with fruit that's sitting on the ground and ready for you to pick up, right? So what what does that include? Um, I'm sending out leads to clubs um, all over our district based on interests that they fill out on Rotary International. So if you get an email from me, uh, the president does, or uh, hopefully she passes it on to someone who can follow up with that lead, because that is not just low hanging fruit. That's right on the ground, just waiting. They want to be. They've reached out. Rotary International and asked about becoming a member. So let's get them into our clubs. We have a lousy turnaround rate in this district for people that have reached out to Rotary International saying they have an interest in clubs in this district. And people um, are not, those people are not becoming Rotarians. So there's something wrong there with our club engagement of those people that are already showing interest. So let's make sure we pick up that fruit off the ground and devour it and get a part of our club, right? Um, Rotary alumni, um, you have people that used to be members here, reach back out to them, invite them back to the club and say, hey, come help us out at this community service project, we'd love to see you again. That's very, very low hanging fruit, if not fruit on the ground. Um, same way with your Rotaracs, all right? Who's about to graduate from Rotarac? Uh, hopefully they're gonna become a member of this club and, they, and that's the next step, that's the whole point. So there's probably members um, that are graduating from uh, University of Dallas, and it's time for them to uh, step into a role here in this club, engage them, and at least invite them to your community service projects. And then you see the, the point of the rest of these. I don't know if you have scholarship recipients or uh, youth leadership individuals, but those are extremely low hanging fruit, if not fruit on the ground, that's just ready for you to pick up and bring, engage them. But you have to reach out to them. It's not just going to happen. People don't take the initiative a lot. We have to take the initiative. It's part of being excellent Rotarians, right? All right, next screen. So now we talked about fruit on the ground. Now we're going to talk about very low hanging fruit. Okay, it's not on the ground yet, but it's it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, neighborhood local businesses. Who goes to a dry cleaners? Um, who goes to a restaurant owned locally? Uh, I bet if you think about it, each and every one of you has some sort of local neighborhood business that you frequent. And have you asked them to become Rotarians? What about members in this club? How many of you are members of this country club? Probably a lot of you, right? Have you asked fellow country club members to, hey, you should come to our breakfast, Rotary breakfast. It's a wonderful opportunity to engage and give back to the community. And it's right here in your country club every, uh, what day is this, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's been a long week, every Thursday morning at 7 a.m., right? <laughs> so um, ask your local business owners. I've actually been to a couple clubs where I said, uh, this is a wonderful restaurant, um, who's the owner? And they said, oh, it's a local guy, blah, blah, blah. And I said, have you ever invited him to one of your rotary lunches? <laughs> and they're like, no, I haven't thought of that. I'm like, seriously? The owner is hosting you every week for Rotary, and you've never invited him to one of your Rotary clubs. So that is very low hanging fruit, all right? Because who's got a better opportunity to, um, to in, improve their business, let alone give back to the community, is a local business owner. I mean, they are the, they are the ones that need to be part of Rotary to, to grow their business, let alone you know give back to the community, which also grows their business, right? Um, your spouse. Right? I know some of you might be looking at me like, I come here to get away from my spouse. <laughs> well, okay, maybe some of you don't. So invite your spouse because have you ever thought that maybe they would like to become engaged to Rotary? Um, your offspring and your offspring's friends. Those are, where the, are very low hanging fruit. They understand that you're a mover and shaker in the community. So if you just ask them to come to a meeting or come to a, a community service project, they're very likely to feel, you know, wow, that's cool. Such and such a dad's invited me to come to this exclusive, you know, club. And they're gonna feel, they're gonna feel included that way, right? See how I just did that? Exclusive to include. <laughs> um, your business associates and vendors. Uh, all of us are involved or engaged, or maybe we're retired, but who do we know that is a customer or a vendor or a former customer or a former vendor? Uh, vendors are wonderful, very low hanging fruit. They're going to feel a little more obligated, right? Because you're their customer, right? So invite them 
Because once again, I think once they hear the message of Rotary and start to understand how they can give back to the community and to the world, they're going to be sold. And the best tool we have is Rotary International's website, rotary.org. If you go to rotary.org, how many of you have been to rotary.org recently? Oh, good. A few of you. Um, it's a wonderful brochure. It is a beautifully done, engaging opening page of Rotary.org, which really delineates why we're here. It really does sell Rotary like nothing else. And if you're not interested after looking at that, that Rotary.org's opening page, then you're not a Rotarian to be. You're not somebody we, you know, that, that wants to you know, get back to the community and serve. So they're not Rotarian material. But I think if you send somebody there, they're going to be like really interested in learning more. So use that as a tool. So next screen. Now we're on to the low hanging fruit. Okay, it's not very low hanging. You may have to reach a little bit, but we can reach, right? That's our that's our goal in, in, in Rotary is not to get too comfortable, but to understand that we have to ensure that this wonderful worldwide organization exists in 30 years. So who do we know? That might be interested in the next speaker. <laughs> Who, who's your next speaker next next Thursday? Who do you know that might be interested in what that speaker's speaking about? Think about that. You probably know somebody that maybe it's a it's an accountant coming to talk about the new IRS rules or something. Maybe there's somebody you know that that would be interesting to them, or a fellow accountant that might want to come here. Um, somebody in their industry. Uh, same with um, your service group, other service group members, uh, churches, think about other organizations um, and your community outreach volunteers. All of those people are very low hanging fruit or low hanging fruit. Um, I, in particular, about almost 10, 11 years ago, it's going now. Okay. About 11 years ago, um, somebody reached out to me on LinkedIn, uh, barely knew the person. Um, and they said, hey, come to Rotary next Friday as my guest. And it's like, what's Rotary? That's how I became a Rotarian. Somebody I barely knew messaged me through LinkedIn and said, come to Rotary. And I thought, hmm, okay. He told me it was a service organization. And this is really annoying. I'm sorry. I don't know why it's going in and out. Anyway, um, he invited me and um, he and his wife welcomed me to Rotary. And I became a member of the club. It was wonderful. So uh, Facebook friends, um, we're going to talk about posting on, on social media, but targeted messages, targeted emails to your friends is going to be the best avenue to get someone to come as a guest. Is somebody you're specifically asking, hey, Joe, I'd love for you to join me for breakfast next, next Thursday. And we have this great speaker. Um, and I want you to learn about our wonderful service organization. And if you ask somebody, oftentimes they feel honored and they feel, um, wow, that's cool. He's he, he interested enough in me to invite me to his exclusive club, right? So now they feel included and they want to come and learn more about it. Next screen. So that brings us to social media, which I was just talking about. We're reaching out with targeted messages to people you know that are links on LinkedIn, Facebook friends, your wife's Facebook friends, uh, but definitely um, posting. Go to the next screen. I want to show you some posts. So this is some of the posts that I do. I that one on the on the far your far right is actually straight from Rotary.org's um, Facebook page. They have beautiful posts that you can just share to your page. And and same thing on LinkedIn. You can share it to LinkedIn and say, ask me how to be a, a, per, a person of action uh, who puts service above self. Reach out to me. Um, and, and then, you know, once you start doing it, every member in here just posted about Rotary once or twice a month. Just think of how much free PR you have right there and how much opportunity that then when you send them a, a message, private message um, to Joe, who's on LinkedIn with you, Joe's like, oh, he, he's seen some of these posts. I'm like, oh, that sounds like a cool thing. Yeah, I would like to come to breakfast next Friday. So you have to start engaging on social media. And I know some clubs are like, well, we're not really social media people. Well, find someone in your club who is and have them post every week about your upcoming speaker. Have them post about your community search projects. Go to the next screen. 
Um, here's a couple examples. Um, so like here, uh, Mark from our club, he, he tagged everybody he could that's on Facebook from our club and said, this is our speaker. Now, I think he could have done a better job of promoting the speaker in that one, but you know, mentioning the speaker ahead of time, and then after you've had the speaker, post uh, about, oh, we have this great speaker today, you know, a picture maybe with the speaker and what something engaging in a sentence that he said. Um, this creates interest. So please find someone who can do your social media posting and they should engage on all uh, sites, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, next screen. Almost done, guys. Hang in there. All right. This is a couple more examples. And this is before and after a community service project. You should definitely be inviting people to come to your community service project, uh, whether there's something they can do to um, volunteer at the project or just show up um, and be a participant at the event. Um, and then after the project is over, um, have um, another post that shows how much fun you all had at your community service project. So before and after, you should be posting every single time. And engage your road wreckers. They're wonderful posters, okay? They can, they can get some social media posting going, and they only have to do is share it to your page. So engage with your road wreck members to do that for you if you're not social media people. Turn to the next screen. All right, so we're almost done. Um, Final um, thought here is do a membership drive. August is almost over, but August is membership for uh, membership month. So make September your membership month and put a drive together and have um, groups of four or five be on a team, you know, the red team, the blue team, the yellow, and make, make a chart in the front of the room and do a racetrack or do some kind of leadership board Who's brought, every time you bring a guest, you move, your team gets moved forward on the board. Challenge each other and see the winning team gets uh, breakfast or dinner bought by all everybody else, right? Everybody else has to put a dollar or two in and they buy the winning team dinners here or somewhere. So do a membership drive because that will help encourage each and every one of you to bring a guest because you're challenging yourself to that. And just think of that, all of you brought guests and, and challenged yourself to bring in one new member this year, you can double the size of this club. That's, that's amazing. That would be amazing. And all you have to do is each new, every one of you, start bringing guests, and you just have to bring one member, one new member into this club. That's not hard. That's not hard. I have people in my old club, people in my new club, that bring in five, six new members a year. And they bring guests all the time. That's how it's done. It's that easy. Engage the people you know. What club? Very you, low hanging fruit. What, what club are you in? Park, Park City. Cities. Park City. Yep. Park Cities. Um, and then I challenge you also to every single Thursday morning for sixty seconds, one of you gets up here and talks about membership. Whether it's, hey, are you posting? Are you remembering to post on social media? Okay, who's brought a guest? Raise your hand. I mean, somebody for one minute every week. And this comes from Rotary International. This is, they want a membership minute at every Rotary club in this country. That's not difficult, right? You guys can scrape out one minute in your meeting every week to remind Rotarians about this is not just about continuing the status quo and getting our next service project done. Uh, number one task we all have as Rotarians is to grow Rotary. Grow Rotary so we have more of an impact in the community, more of an impact in the world. Last screen. So if you uh, you know do this sort of recognition of members who have brought in new members, is there anyone in your club who has brought in some new members recently? Recognize them at the podium. Bring them up. Give them some sort of award. Okay. Maybe you have an award for every member who brings in a new member this year. And maybe it's just a certificate of you did your job as a Rotary. You brought in a new member this year. Thank you, Joe. Shake his hand and then maybe have them do the membership minute and say, how did I get this person into the club? Easy, right? Fun new way to start encouraging everyone here why it's so important that we grow. Um, and do that, you know, do that for your membership minute and those engagement awards.
Final screen. Maybe. Yes, final screen. So other ideas are on the brand center on Rotary International. Uh, I think I've highlighted most of their brilliant ideas, but there's always more ideas. And if you guys come up with, if somebody gets up on one of your membership minutes and said, this is how I brought um, Jack into the club, and it's a great idea, email me that idea. Tell me how it happens so that I can keep uh, motivating and finding some of the best ways to help clubs grow. And frankly, this should be a piece of cake to bring people into this club. I mean, the view alone. Okay. I mean, this is a really cool place to meet every Thursday at some radio, right? I mean, how many people in this community would be thrilled to be asked to come to this country club and have breakfast once a week and engage with the community and, and find ways to give back? They can't do it alone. But if you invite them here, they're going to have that opportunity and they're going to feel included. And your, your club will become more diverse and it will grow. And again, I leave you with one note. I, if any of you are still thinking in your mind, well, I, we don't really want to get it. We like this is the way we are. I, I'm sorry, but you're not going to be here in 30 years. And it's important that this club be here in 30 years. So it is our duty as Rotarians to bring in our replacement, if nothing else, right? So here, here, let's do it. I want to hear this club double in size by the end of the year. Thanks. Questions? Yes. Uh, very good slide. Did you put this slide together? Uh -huh. Yeah. No, no, no. No, I did this all myself. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I tried to pull what I could find, not just from going to clubs and getting tips, but what I could find on Rotary International and what I experienced myself, you know, uh, being a Rotary for 10 years and uh, being an engaged Rotary. So, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes. Where in the north are you from? Um, I lived in Omaha, Nebraska for 25 years. I'm originally from St. Louis, though. I went to uh, Creighton University. For law school. So I was in Creighton practicing in, in Omaha practicing law for many years until uh, my kids were out of the nest and then I fled as south as I could get right now. So yeah, one of my clients made me an offer I could refuse to move me to Dallas. So that's how I ended up here. So uh, yeah, so I'm glad to be out of the cold, although you guys had a nasty bout of it in February, didn't you? So you got a little experience of what I was dealing with in Omaha all winter long. <laughs> of course, our power didn't go out. We knew how to handle that. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, did you have something right there? Oh, yeah. Something we can post on our website? Please. And post it on Facebook. Yes, we did. And say we had a fabulous speaker today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we would like to uh, yes. thank you so much oh, for coming. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks. And this is on the back. Oh, okay. Nice. And we're going to take a picture. Okay. One, two, three. Okay, one more. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. This is true. Is it fair to all concerned? Will it be the will of better friendship? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. All right, bud. Practice it for next year, Jeff. Please practice it. Ah!